Flash, Washington. The White House announces Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. December 7th, 1941, there was Pearl Harbor. Research came to a grinding halt. It's what was there for nuclear physicists to do. During the war, there were six or 7,000 scientists, technicians, but there really were only two or three people who could actually build an atomic bomb, actually put it together, handle the parts. Schreib was one of those people. And this is a person who had this hand in shaping the course of human history. He was a man that didn't have much of an ego, so I think he was flattered in some respects that he got to work with Fermi and Oppenheimer and Beta and people of that ilk. He discovered that the core that was used in this really hot atomic bomb might have a tendency to pre-detonate. Schreib took the responsibility of changing out the core. The risk that he had to take in terms of his personal responsibility, his confidence in his numbers, his confidence in the physics of what he was doing. A little tired of being on the weapons side. When he was given the ability to rise a little bit further up, start getting a little bit more of the culture in the lab, that was when the rover project started coming on. And Raymer Schreiber led this effort at Los Alamos to develop these reactors for use in Project Kiwi. In the mid-1950s, scientists set about to determine if nuclear energy really could be used to provide rocket propulsion. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other thing. Not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Lift off. Lift off. If you figure that World War II started as early as 1932 in China, and certainly in the 30s with, with Nazi Germany, in a war that had killed 70 million people, it was time for it to end. And the, and the atomic bomb certainly did that.